time we just got into orbit now we're going to be landing on the moon it's not a big jump at all we're not skipping a few steps like docking or getting to the moon in the first place but we're just gonna we're just gonna wing it so in campaign missions I usually over engineer since this is the game of over engineering and uh, you want to get where you're going as often as you can so you just want to start off with a pod and a parachute so you don't splat when you come home and then what I usually do is I put on a payload thing here for the service bay when the service bay will allow you to put in uh, if you're playing this in campaign, is it puts, let's put in this science module, uh, some mystery goo, and some experiments. By the way, you guys might see me doing some some things with symmetry, some things without symmetry. So X, turn symmetry on, shift X, uh, goes back one. So this whole thing is set up, close that up, and uh, science juniors, those things are always lovely to have. So this is becoming a tall boy already which is going to be difficult to land if we're just going to be doing one column. So uh, we won't do just one column. And since this, since this is a game of over-engineering, let's start with this fuel tank. Uh, and let's get this terrier here. Now, you click on this tank by, uh, you hit Alt and you click on it and it'll create a copy of it. And uh, in order to get more stability, we want several of these tanks. All right. And let's do some space duct tape and let's go. Not the most attractive looking craft, but it should land on the moon pretty successfully. But so we don't lose these engines, we don't want them to blow up. We want to ground. Uh, and you want to get some landing struts on here. Now these aren't available early on, so we're not going to use those. We're going to use these little ones. They should have enough clearance, but if these are too much for you, these will even work, but you're going to need to use the offset tool here. But we're not going to use these. We're going to use the medium ones. And that has, gives us enough clearance to land successfully. Now if you go over into fuel tanks again, you want to get the external uh, fuel line here and bring it into the center. And now we need to work on staging. So you want all these engines to go off at the same time. And then you want this stage to go off separately. This will drop the outside tanks with a full inside tank. So you want to land with this entire thing if these these should be close to empty when you land. And then you should be able to get home just from this. So start with those retracted, bring this up by clicking it and dragging up, or rolling up with your mouse wheel. Let's go to coupling again, and uh, put on this little doohickey, the TD-12, TD my apologies. And since we are going to continue over engineering this, we are going to, ooh, drain valve, that is new, I think that's a mod. Uh, my apologies, you got distracted. Okay, too big of an adapter. We need a smaller adapter. All right. So we want a little bit. Ah, there we go. Perfect. All right, so that'll bring us to a larger fuel tank, but still not quite large enough for us. So let's get this big boy on there. So you want to use this first, that second. And then you can get to the larger fuel tanks. That's too big. All right. So this is too small, that's the medium tank, but we just skipped right over to the large tanks. Alright. So all right, let's use this big one here. Uh, let's put something small in here first. So I'm kind of winging this at the same time, but if you guys build something similar to this or close to it, you should be fine. So we have, we want to get some thrust up here, uh, skiff. We want to look for something with a high uh, ASL and vacuum. So 330 is pretty good. 380 is absolutely wonderful. So this is going to be a really slow engine. But it should have plenty of delta V. You want to make sure it's separated from everything. Now when we are in... If we go and switch this into... Alright. Uh, bring this altitude to vacuum. You see that it'll give us enough to do the transfer stage to the moon. Sorry about that. All right, let's close that. And now we want bigger decouplers. The TD25 is the correct size, and throw one of these on there. Bring this up again because we're going to need some space. Now this thing is way over the engineered. Normally, if it's early on in the campaign, I will do a thing called asparagus staging, which I'll do in another video. Uh, so we are at 96 tons. So, this can only produce 56 tons at liftoff, so we want something larger than that. Uh, two 24 tons, 64 tons, uh, 
24 tons. Where is a larger engine? By the way, I'm using this calculation I talked in the previous video. If you look at the thrust at ASL, you divide that by 10, and that'll give you your uh, max lifting capacity at that weight. That is way too large. I feel... Okay, there's the main cell. They changed the art. Sorry, that's why I was confused. So, main cell engine. We're at 102 tons, so this will get us going quite easily. And uh, because this game is about the overkill, let's add some more stages on here. Let's do two of these. Bring those on. Alright. So I'm going fast here. I'm a little bit sorry. You could rewind the video, or I could slow down in the next one up to you guys. Just let me know what you prefer. But you want to use the fuel line here, some space duct tape, all over. Because these will not come off very easily. Now, uh, we're going to need to do a maneuver uh, when we uh, ditch these so that it is safe. Let's make it a little bit more dynamic. Aerodynamic. Oh, my apologies. My tongue got twisted. Aerodynamic. Those are way too big. Okay, so these are the OG ones. These have been in the game since way back in the day. Let's add some more struts. More struts are always good. Or not always, and you do have a limited part count earlier in the game if you're doing campaign mode. Alright. I know I might seem excessive with all my struts, but it, it might save you. So it's always better to overstrut than understrut if your part count allows it. So let's double check staging and uh, my people or keep on coming. I, I need to turn this off for the next video. Alright, let's get this stage down here. Let's bring all the main engines down there. So these three will fire first. Then these two should detach, as you can see here. Then this uh, middle engine will continue. And once that burns out, you will turn into your uh, Wolfhound, the high efficiency engine, which will bring you to the moon. Everything else will land you successfully uh, and uh, bring you back home. And uh, let's just name this Kerpalo 1. And let's, uh, all the staging looks right. Actually, no, it doesn't. We are missing an entire stage. So it's always good to double check. So the stage I'm missing, as well as the heat shield. Wow, we would not have made it back home. So let's put the heat shield on. Uh, coupling, TD-12. Throw that on there. And let's make sure that's in the right location. Okay, so you see if you hover over it, it highlights in the third stage, so you want to create a stage before that. Bring that up. And this, so our staging is all kinds of screwed up right now. So this will detach as those will. You do not want that. You want this in a separate stage, and you want that to go off at the same time as these do. Alright, there we go. So first stage looks good, second stage looks good if it's these. Third stage, yep, don't need a fourth stage. All those engines pop off at the same time. As that pops off, the outer engines pop off, and we get home. All right, it is time to save. Now, normally you want to get to the uh, the moon a little bit cheaper in this in campaign mode, but this is still profitable for almost any mission you have there. And this launch vehicle should be able to lift something significantly heavier than this, even to the point of putting a small uh, moon or space station in orbit around the moon. All right, so save again, and let's launch. Hopefully it doesn't fall over. Uh, I didn't put the braces in, or wh whatever they're called. But they're not super necessary, usually. All right. So we're not even going to worry about where the moon is. Normally you want it to be more optimal, but I want to get up into space first. We're actually not in that bad of a spot for the moon, too. You want to be about 90 degrees when you start, but this should be fine. Alright. Now, you should know how to control the spacecraft by now with the WAS keys, but the Q and E keys should roll the spacecraft. Now, I just realized something. These do not have gimbling, which might cause an issue. Because I don't believe they have gimbling. I'm not sure. I've never seen these. Okay, so they do have a limited amount of gimbling. It's just not very reactive, the spacecraft. So as you can see, these outer tanks are uh, emptying first, and these inner tanks should remain full. Now, as I've said, okay, so we have some compression here. You want to minimize your throttle at this point. This should be a good speed until those uh, airlines go away, because that is highly inefficient when you're trying to get into orbit. So, this is a heavier aircraft, so we're not going to uh, pitch over quite yet, because it's more likely to flip. Uh, but we will start pitching over around 20k, uh, 20 kilometers.
Uh, it should be safe to throttle back up now. You might want to start rolling very slowly. Make sure you don't get caught in the wind. All right. Very slowly with this. And watch your apoapsis. You want to get this to about 100. All right, it is safe to pitch over to 45 now. We are at 30 kilometers. It's probably safe to pitch over sideways, actually. So between the blue and orange and the 90 mark, just pitch on full over. Now our side engines are, they are already out, so that's, most of the time you don't want to spin to get some centripetal force, so they'd fling off, but we were in a safe enough position and they were balanced well enough to not cause an issue. On large asparagus stage aircraft, sometimes they will crash into the engines and cause you to uh, revert. All right, so we're at 86K, which is fine. It should go up to 100K throughout this burn. But this burn will actually be more than enough to get us into orbit, and will be able to get us to the moon, most likely. So we are way more, uh, we are over-engineered uh, by a lot, because this entire stage right here will effectively get us to the moon surface. Uh, and then these will be the, we'll, we will ditch this before we land, because we want our landing gear. Uh, but that will give us these full uh, tanks to get to where we need to quite easily, without having to worry too much. All right, now normally you'd want to cut off about 100K, but since we do not have the best thrust-to-weight ratio, we probably want to get this a little bit higher. It's safe to pitch into the orange once it's 100K, but don't go too far, otherwise you will uh, kill yourself. Or your Kerbal, rather. All right, so it is probably pretty safe now to uh, bring this back into the blue-orange area, the horizon. And once it's 110, all right safe to stop so we are 200 meters per second from a complete orbit uh, now since we okay we are not in the proper position for the moon yet so let's get this up to uh, 100 so point prograde uh, if you don't have that option just manually do it it's this marker here if your spacecraft does not roll easily since we didn't install SAS on this one you want to throttle up lightly so you can gimbal and then once you're on the mark you want to full throttle by hitting Z or Z depending on where you are. Uh, over in the place where we are correct, it is Z. All right. All right. So it's a fairly circular orbit, not perfect. It's a deviation of five kilometers, but it doesn't really matter. We're just going to the moon. All right, so you want to speed up. So I'm not gonna use the maneuver mode, uh, maneuver node planning for this one, uh, because by the time you're going to the moon, you might not have the tracking station upgraded sufficiently for it, but you want to uh, bring your apoapsis up to the same orbit of the moon. So you want this to be over here. And it will show us the encounter on this, but uh, if you do not have the tracking station unlocked to that level, you, sh you should feel relatively confident that you will have an encounter with the moon if you have this sort of angle. Alright, let's cut it out. All right, let's meet up. So this meet up here, we're actually going to have a collision with the moon. But uh, so we're going to pretend we don't see that quite yet because you might not have it in the tracking station. Uh, it is safe to pitch this, but there's no reason to waste fuel quite yet. Let's just time warp up to the moon. I need to make sure I don't crash into it on accident. I think I just did. Nope, nope. All right, perfect. Don't be very careful when you're time accelerating to the moon. Okay, so we are on a collision course with the moon. In the tracking station and early on in the game, you will see this collision path. In order to avoid this, you want to throttle up very slightly and pitch over to the 90 degree mark between the blue and the origin, orange. Uh, the orange is directly at the ground, the blue is directly at the sky. The, the meeting point is horizon, so you want to point at 90 horizon until you get a uh, periapsis, or I guess here would be an apoapsis. No, it would be a periapsis, because a periapsis is the point closest to the body. All right, that's a pretty safe one. Now, for maneuverability purposes, we are going to ditch this now. Uh, I forgot to turn this off of the prograde. Keep on stability assist, uh, sometimes because otherwise you have to fight it. Uh, but it is safe to ditch that now. And just to make sure our engine is on, we are good. We are going to time accelerate to this marker, the periapsis. Or periloon, perimoon, I'm not too sure what it would be called. I know on Earth it would be called peri-G. We are not there. All right, so let's maneuver over to the retrograde marker. Make sure our time warp is at one. 
And like I said, if you're going too slowly, feel free to throttle up a little bit by tapping that shift key. Uh, so you have a little bit more control. Now, as you can see here, we don't have a perfectly zero inclination, which is fine. We don't need to do any uh, precise landing right now. It's relatively circular. You don't need to make these things circular, but it does make thing it does make things a little bit easier. All right, and now we are going to try and land in this crater. Okay, so opposite the crater, you want to point to retrograde again, and you want to get this periaps as low as it is safe. I would aim for about 15 kilometers. All right, that's a little bit too. Too close, too close. It would be fine if our mission we want uh, us to forget and accidentally crash into the moon. Here, let's bring that up a little bit. And 15 kilometers. Now you can bring this much closer, but this should be a safe distance. We have plenty of fuel to slow down here. Now our thrust to weight on this is going to be rather bad. I forget what the, the max auto on this is. 375. Okay, so we have 200 here between those four engines, and I just messed this up. Yes, I did. All right, my apologies, but I was just figuring out what the fuel, not the fuel, the uh, max throttle of this was in uh, space and in a vacuum. Man, I wish I brought water before this recording, but hey, we all forget things, yeah? Well, there's no water on the moon, so I guess we won't need it while we're recording. Uh, let's bring this back down to 15k. I'm going to move it down to 10k, so it's a little bit easier. All right. Cut it off. All right, now he wants a time warp. Okay, so we are directly above the crater. You want to switch this to surface by clicking on it. And like I said, stability assist. And you want to bring this down to zero. It's not the most efficient way, but it is uh, the safest way to kill your velocity. And then you'll only have a drop of around 12 kilometers, which is easy enough to manage with. We're not going to be covering suicide burns today, maybe another time. But those involve some calculus, I'm not really up for that right this minute. Uh, you can also use MechJev for those, I guess. I think this might have it. I don't know. Alright. Now, you don't even need to make it complete, so don't follow the retrograde marker, but you do want to kill your horizontal velocity. Alright, it's killed. As you can see, it's right over that marker. Uh, at this point, I would bring down the landing gear. And this still set has some fuel on it, but uh, for safety reasons, we're going to ditch it and make sure our four engines work, which they do. Now would be a good time to quick save in case we mess up. All right, it is safe to go down and you want to keep this below 300 if you can. Okay, scratch the 300, I'm lying about that, but you do want to keep it below 200. Once you start seeing rocks like this, depending on your graphical settings, you want to keep it 100 or less. But the, the more engineering your spacecraft is, the safer it will be. So inside the cockpit, we have a radar altimeter here. So we are at 2K versus 4K. So we, uh, it's 2200 will be our touchdown. And be overly cautious with this. You have plenty of fuel in the spacecraft to uh, balance or do whatever you need to do. But you want to hit it, the uh, surface, as soft as you can. I can't really give you markers, but uh, you'll get a feel for what is a safe speed given a certain height over time. We could land at the speed by like landing as close to zero as possible. So we kill all our horizontal velocity, which means we just need to worry about our vertical velocity here. All right. All right, and we have touchdown. And this is when you collect all your science, do all that jazz. Uh, say you collected it here. You can only use this once unless you have a scientist on board, which we don't. Zero science because we're in uh, creative mode. And then this will c collect all the data, which is why we have it. And you close it up after you do all your experiments. Uh, this just makes it safe with you when you land. So at this point, you can EVA, do whatever you need. Uh, you use Okay, if you press the R button, he'll bring out his, uh, his backpack. His EVA suit, shift is up, uh, control is down, WASD is all the other things. Alright. Alright, 
right, let's board and let's get out of here. Let's put our stability on first. Now, we are going in the same. We are pointed in the same direction of the moon's path, so we can't. We don't really have the most optimal uh, path off of this. But what we will do is we will launch and go straight over to about 90 degrees with about a 10 degree positive inclination into the uh, blue. And then we will bring the uh, the apoapsis to probably 20k until, uh, and then we'll coast and keep on. Uh, we might have to do a circularization. Then we will do our final burn here. Alright, so let's do that. Just like I said, landing gear up. About 10k. Now, just uh, for the sake of this video, we are going to cut the uh, outside engines off because you should be able to make it up home with just this. Normally, you do want to keep those, though, as long as you can. And with the moon, you do want to go over sideways as fast as you can. It's more efficient. There's more, no atmosphere, and it gives you the, the most uh, advantage from gravity. There is a theorem about it. I'm not, I don't recall what it is, but I could figure it out some other time. So this is probably a bit too much, but we are here for the overkill. So get the apoapsis over uh, the midway point between the moon, the part that is directly facing the uh, Kerbin. And this is where we will do our burn. This is turning out to be quite a long video, but that is okay. Alright, so we're going to pretend we're doing this without the the map here. Uh, be, because we want to have the tracking station upgraded this high by the time you're going to the moon. So you want to burn until this hits about 900. I think, might be 800, might have changed. Uh, Okay, so we've just broken from the moon. Uh, so since we've broken from the moon, we would not have the, this purple line in early in the campaign. So we're just going to cruise out of uh, moon or orbit. Once we're here, we will get this view. Now, if you do have the nav station, you want to just directly go into the uh, 30k periapsis. But now is where you would engage your engines lightly if you need to. But uh, you want to get your periapsis into the atmosphere. I double clicked on the uh, Kerbin to center on it. We're not going to be worried about landing directly at the KSC today. There's really no point in it. Unfortunately, we'll be landing at night. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this to 50, or no, 55, which will lower, if we don't land immediately, uh, it will lower our Apple apps significantly so we can be more picky about our landing location. And now all we need to do is accelerate. I forget the, uh, the button to center on the craft again. Yeah, oh well, I'll have to look that up after for uh, next video. There is a button that always recenters you on the aircraft, but all right, all right. Now let's point retrograde again. If you have a uh, SAS, great. If not, well, you're in for a wild ride. You just want to make sure your parachute is not pointing towards it. It is nice to have extra fuel though, because it does give you gibbling and some control, as well as a backup electric source if you are out of electricity. Probably safe to burn a little bit here, actually, just to lower the app wax is faster. We still have plenty of delta V, as you can see. So I probably should have gone deeper into the atmosphere there, probably 50k. But this is fine. Okay. Alright, now if you saw my last video, you saw that we missed the Kerbal Space Center, so we're going to try getting a little bit closer this time. After we get out of the atmosphere, that is. Perfect. Alright, let's go point retrograde. We are directly across from the KSC. We're going to try bringing our periapsis up in this area.
Let's point at the horizon here. Okay, too much, too much. All right, well, now I just seem silly. This will burn us up, so don't do what I just did. Good thing we have plenty of fuel to, for mistakes. Okay. Now, more complicated maneuver. I believe this is called anti-norm. No, radial in. All right. These are the normals. And if you point towards the uh, Kerbin or the Brown, it should shift your entire orbit a little bit. Now, we are running low on Delta V here, so I need to actually worry about getting into the atmosphere at this point. Okay, this should be relatively close to Kerbin. I'm not too sure, but let's... Uh, or the KSC, uh, the Kerbal Space Center. All right, we're going. This is a very hot approach. Don't do this normally. Uh, now, normally when I come back from the moon, I just shoot for 30k and just come in at one time. I might have to bounce off the atmosphere once, uh, which is what we did the first time we went in. But I, this allows us to pick our landing site more accurately, and this just comes with practice. I have not done it in quite a long time, which I think is obvious by this video, but uh, it's not the worst. All right, so make sure you're pointed. Uh, at the retrograde, uh, stability assist, if anything. If but you, at this point in the game, you probably have retrograde unlocked with one or uh, several of your pilots. All right, I'm gonna do the last little burn here, so it's a little bit closer to the KSC. Oh. All right. Well, we lost our stage, which is fine. We've got a heat shield for the rest of our spacecraft here. Now, if we ran out of electric right now, we would probably tumble a little bit, or wobble, it looks like. Which seems like we are in a stable position, which is why I like this little service bay here. Now, in previous versions of KSP, uh, this would bust in the ocean. So I guess we're going to see if that happens in the newest version. Alright. So we're not too far off from KSC. This is close enough to where you could have a mission... To come pick up this, but if that's if you're into that sort of role playing thing, because this island isn't too far off the coast of the KSC, I've done flights out there before just for the uh, the fun of it. You know, we are quite far away. My apologies. All right, but this is a basic tutorial on how to get to the moon. Um, as I said before, you want to wait till this is white. You want to make sure you're at one X physics, and you can feel free to warp up after that. Now, this will touch down a little bit harder than our first spacecraft in the uh, orbit tutorial, but it um, shouldn't be too bad. Hopefully, this isn't bust. It did in the old versions. It's not, and we are on fourth time warp, and you can recover, and you're good to go.